I hereby call the Standing Committee of the Finance um, Committee to order Monday, March 2nd, 2020, 7 p.m. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, counselors. Good evening. Good evening, Madam, Good evening. Clerk. Uh, Madam Clerk, could you read number one, please? Of New Bay or two of 14 Madrid Square, unit number two, Brockton, Mass., to the Brockton Community Cable Television Board for a three-year term ending February 2023. Invited Honorable Mayor Sullivan or his designee, New Bay Ritu. Uh, Madam evening. Chairman, Madam President, members of the Council, it's not too often that the City of Brockton can consider appointing an Emmy award-winning talent. <laughs> Honest to God, think about that. Someone that cut his roots and started at the Brockton Community Access, and I'm so proud to have put Newbie's name forward. <coughs> but with that being said, Newbie Rote. I uh, don't have much to say, but I uh, just want to appreciate the appointment, bottom of my heart. I really appreciate it. Just um, really great people on the board. I just want to be a good asset to the community. I think uh, with my resume and um, things I've done in my career, I've really been blessed to just be an asset to the community access board. Well, thank you, Nubi, and we are very proud to have an award-winning uh, mm -hmm. uh, director here with us. Move so. for favor of recommendation. Second. Second. All those in favor of um, the... All those opposed? Mm -hmm. The motion carries favorably back to the full city council. Thank you for serving the Thank you. Our city. Thank you. Thank you, Newby. Madam Clerk, number two. Of Paul Stadinsky Jr. Jr. of 48 Carlisle Street, Brockton, Mass., as an alternate to the Brockton License Commission for a three-year term ending February 2023, invited Honorable Mayor Sullivan or his designee, Paul Stadinsky Jr. Madam Chairman, members of the committee, again, I just want to echo the same sentiments I spoke before. It's not too often that we have a former police chief, an esteemed former member of the city council representing Ward 4, that is ready, willing, and able to hit the ground running on day one on license as an alternate. So with that being said, Paul Stadinsky. Good evening, counselors. Good evening. Good evening. Madam Chairman. Good evening. Good evening. Any questions at all? I'm, I'm right here to answer. One question. Yes. Do you know what the job details? <laughs> I'm sorry, I have to turn my good idiot. Do you know what the job details? Do you know what you have to do to be an alternate member? Uh, of the a little bit. I've, I uh, thought I'll, you did. I'll bone up on it. Favorable recommendation. Second. Uh, oh, Madam Chair. Sorry. Council Lally. Uh, I, I just want to, to mention, because we'd spoken with you know former Councilor Sedensky earlier, that there's a Scribner's error and it's not uh, junior. We will have that corrected. Matt, if you can just have Thank that you very much. corrected. Absolutely. Thank you. All those in favor, of, uh, Councillor? Yes, Martin. now you're going to be an alternate. Now, you're, you're not an alternate on the council courts. We just wonder when you're going to show up. No, again. no, full time council courts. Okay. <laughs> we can practice Tuesday, make sure you're there. Thank you. <laughs> A motion's been made and properly seconded. All those in favor of the appointment? All those opposed? <coughs> the appointment carries favorably back to the full city council. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you, Councilor. Sure. And I would like to thank the mayor for these two amazing appointments. We're really lucky to have these gentlemen yeah. serve our city. So thank you for all you do. Uh, Madam Clerk, number, um, number three. Promotion of Matthew Graham to rank of temporary sergeant in the Brockton Police Department. Invited Honorable Mayor Sullivan or his designee, Emmanuel Gomes, Chief of Police, Matthew Graham. Good evening, Chief. I know that um, Temporary Sergeant Graham contacted us, and he is out of the uh, city. He's at a convention, so he's unable to be here this evening. But um, he correct. did want to let uh, us know. He's out of state. Correct. Motion to recommend favor. Second. Second. All those in favor of the appointment? All those opposed? The appointment carries favorably back to the full city council. Thank you, Chief. Madam Clerk, number four. Promotion of Michael Skinner to rank of permanent sergeant in the Brockton Police Department. Invited Honorable Mayor Sullivan or his designee, Emmanuel Gomes, Chief of Police, Michael Skinner. Good evening, Chief. Good evening, Sergeant. Good evening. Good evening. I'd, yep. I'd, just, like, I'd just like to say that uh, I'm very honored uh, that he's uh, up for promotion been an excellent police officer and he will uh, be the pride of the team. He's been a, he's been a great officer and I, I couldn't recommend anybody higher than Mike. You make a motion for favor recommendation. Second. Second. Mayor, did you 
I do also just want to uh, say that he's a bar certified Massachusetts attorney here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, which also speaks volumes to his dedication to his craft. Thank we you. We won't hold that against him. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> A motion's been made and properly seconded. All those in favor of the uh, promotion? All those opposed? The promotion carries favorably back to the full city council. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Number five. Promotion of Sergeant Brenda Perez to rank of temporary lieutenant in the Brockton Police Department. Invited Honorable Mayor Sullivan or his designee, Emmanuel Gomes, Chief of Police, Sergeant Brenda Perez. Good evening. Good evening, uh, members of the council. It's uh, with great honor uh, that uh, Officer uh, Sergeant Perez is uh, up for lieutenantship. It's a historic moment, and I'm very proud of the fact that she will be the first female police lieutenant on the Brockton Police Department. Would you like to say anything? Yes. Thank you for inviting me here today. Thank you, Mayor Sullivan, Chief Gomes, my husband, and my boys. As a lifelong resident of Brockton, I am honored to be recommended for promotion for the first female police lieutenant in the city. I'm humble and grateful, and I recognize the significance of the moment, not only of the, woman, the moment as a woman, but also as a first-generation minority. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the motion's been made. I second it. Properly seconded. I third it. <laughs> I fourth it. <laughs> All those in favor of the promotion of the first woman um, lieutenant in the history of Brockton. All those opposed? The promotion carries favorably back to the full city council. I'm going to take a few minute recess. Huh? Calling the meeting back to order. SARS. <laughs> Madam Clerk, <coughs> number six. Ordered acceptance and expenditure of the grant award in the amount of $144,041.60 from Executive Office of Elder Affairs FY20 Formula Grant to City of Brockton Council on Aging Fiscal Year 20 Formula Grant Fund. Invited Honorable Mayor Sullivan or his designee, Troy Clarkson, Chief Financial Officer, Janice Fitzgerald, Director of Council on Aging. <coughs> Good evening, councillors. Good evening. Do you have anything for um, us? This is just our um, annual formula grant from Executive Office of Elder Affairs. And this is actually a very good example of how the census is going to work for us. Um, our funds are based off the um, elder count. So we've been carrying a pretty low figure since 2010, hopefully in 2020 when everyone gets out and does their census, um, the numbers will increase for us. Yeah. Motion for favorable recommendation. Second. Second. A motion has been made and properly seconded. On the motion. On the motion, Councilor Castro. Good evening. Hi. Thank you for being here, Ms. Fitzgerald. I just want to say that I think you and your staff do a terrific job. You really make a difference in the lives of many seniors residing in Brockton, and I'm very grateful for your efforts. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, and I'll make sure I let the staff know that as well. Please do. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chairman. <coughs> Motion's been made and properly seconded. All those in favor? All those opposed? <coughs> The order carries <coughs> favorably back to the full city council. Um, and I just want to remind um, folks that St. Patrick's Day party is coming up soon. So I hope to see you all there um, singing council chords. Oh, boy. Of, of course. <laughs> One of the best parties in town. <coughs> I hope the mayor is going to join us. You're still, you're still allowed. <laughs> Madam Clerk, number seven. Ordered. <coughs> One, that the mayor of Brockton, pursuant to the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53A, be and is hereby authorized to accept this grant from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Housing Choice Initiative Program. And two, that the mayor of Brockton be and is hereby authorized to expend and take such other actions as are necessary to carry out the terms, purposes, and conditions of this grant to be administered by the city's Department of Planning, 
of e Planning and Economic Development invited Honorable Mayor Sullivan or his designee, Troy Clarkson, Chief Financial Officer, Robert May, Director of Planning and Economic Development. Good evening, Councilors. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, you may remember we had uh, been here maybe a month ago mm -hmm. working on the same grant. We did, uh, uh, we were requested to rewrite some of the language in the order and we have done that, but it's the same grant to make improvements to pedestrian um, ways in uh, uh, Campello. Okay, Councilor Thompson. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. May, for being here tonight. Um, just two quick questions. Yes, sir. Um, the, the expenditure, is it to be expected to be made in fiscal year 2020 or fiscal year 2021? It is a two-year grant, so they should, um, we'll begin the planning and engineering of it this year, um, and most of the work will probably begin in fiscal year 2021. Now, is this uh, the work? Is this done by a uh, outside contractor, or is this work done by the city? It will be worked on by an outside contractor. Okay. Have we, do we identify them yet? or, or we, we haven't finished the design work, so we haven't been able to put it out to bid yet. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions, Councilors? Councilor Ianeri? Thank you. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Mr. May, just for my own peace of mind, and I get a little absent-minded sometimes, but was this not the same type of uh, our grant that we had discussed, um, I think we were, we were in the mayor's office about a month ago. Is that the same grant that we were talking about with the um, no. Uh, no, no, transit? No, that, that's a different this one? Is a different, yes. okay. This is a different grant. That's a different one, okay, Yes, great. sir. Thank you. Any other questions? Move favorable. Second. Second. Motion's been made <coughs> properly seconded. All those in favor of granting? All those opposed? The order carries favorably back to the full city council. <coughs> Number eight, Madam Clerk. Ordered. The City Council reviews an extension of the right, re yeah. residency requirements in accordance with the revised ordinances of the City of Brockton, Article 3, Section 2 110, City of Brockton Ordinance Waiver of Residency Extension in reference to the Library Department. Okay. Invited Honorable Mayor Sullivan or his designee, Paul Engel, Library Director, Kelly Gates, Head Adult Services Librarian. Madam Chairman, members of the committee, um, what's before you is an extension, not a full waiver. Uh, the library director had come to me and expressed to me the detailed facts relative to the health issue uh, and the fact that due to a health issue, there was a delay in actually finding suitable housing within the city of Brockton. <coughs> what I at that time said was I would definitely entertain an extension, but I'd have to put a drop dead date there, a specific date on or before July 1. Uh, and the library director and the employee thought that that was appropriate. So they are here if you have any questions, but that's what bef is before you this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. <coughs> Any questions, Councilors? Move to recommend Councilor favorably. Ca Councilor Cardoso has a question. Good evening, Councilors. Good evening. How are you, sir? I'm good. How, are How you? long has um, Kelly Gates worked at the library? I hired Kelly in November of 2018. November of 2018. And is this a full time position? Or yes, part yes, it is. Okay. All right. That's all I have for the moment. Okay. Need more? Councilor. Um, Oh, well. uh, just for the record, counselors, uh, particularly for the new counselors, we did the same thing for our city engineer. <coughs> I, I will not try to pronounce his name because <laughs> I, I don't want to. Uh, Chike. Chike. <laughs> Chike. Chike, yes, Chike. Uh, and so I, I see this as being perfectly consistent <coughs> with what we did before, is to give someone an extension because of sickness and allow that person to have some time to move into the city. And I might add, GK moved into the city and everything worked out very well. Thank you. Any other okay. questions, Councilors? Entertain a motion? Okay. Move to recommend favor. Second. Second. A motion's been made and properly seconded. All those in favor of uh, granting an extension to the residency requirements? All those opposed? The mo motion carries favorably back to the full city council. Madam Clerk, item number nine, please. Ordered. The City Council reviews an exemption from the residency requirement in accordance with the revised ordinance of the City of Brockton, Article 3, Section 2 110, City of Brockton Ordinance Waiver of Residency in Reference to the Board of Health Department. Invited Honorable Mayor <coughs> Sullivan or his designee, Amy Badger, Executive Health Officer, Mary Drake, Animal Inspector. Councilors, I do have a letter here from the Interim <coughs> Executive Health Officer, Amy Badger, dear Council, Madam President, this is to inform the Standing Committee on Finance 
that I'll not be able to attend the meeting scheduled for Monday, March 2nd due to a prior commitment that evening. As the interim executive health officer overseeing the Board of Health, I am, I am obligated to adhere to the ordinance of the City of Brockton referring to the resident requirements on employment of Section 2-110, which brings us to this. Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the committee, this differs from the previous one. This is not an extension. This is a flat-out request for a waiver, and I will uh, express to you the details of this. Um, the individual here in question who's here tonight uh, took a job at the City of Brockton. Um, she was terminated at that time due to the fact that she did not move in. Uh, mayor Rodriguez uh, was the mayor at that time. Um, it was published, uh, duly published, to try to hire someone that would meet the standards. Um, there were no applicants. It had been uh, noticed four separate times. At that time, uh, in his wisdom, the then uh, mayor brought the individual back to work for the city of Brockton. Uh, she does not live in the city of Brockton. She has the animal inspecting uh, position, which is a unique position. Uh, she does not have any intentions to move to the city of Brockton, uh, but I did feel that it was appropriate to bring it forward due to the fact, out of respect for the previous mayor, and also because nobody within the confines of the city of Brockton applied at that time, and I told her that I would indeed bring it before the council, and ultimately it's up to the council to decide. But she is here for any questions. Thank you. Any questions, councilors? Thank you, Mayor. Motion. Uh, Councilman Castro. Thank you. <coughs> Good evening, Ms. Drake. I just wanted to say that you and I worked together quite a bit last summer because Ward 4 had animal related problems arising from chicken coops here and there, right? And I think some goats too. Yes. And um, your expertise and your qualifications are just very important to our city, um, especially because we have so much livestock. Um, and, and that seems to be growing. And so I take the residency ordinance very seriously. I know my constituents do as well. But I really feel that under these circumstances, you have a talent that we advertised for uh, less, uh, you know, last year. We could not fill, and so I'm going to support your waiver. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Farwell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and, and colleagues. <coughs> Having worked for the police department, the animal control officers and animal control inspector, they're, they're part of our public safety network. Uh, it takes a special person to complete the training and be comfortable handling animal issues. For the public, it's not a barking dog. It's an exotic pet. Six-foot boa constrictor gets loose. Who do we call? Animal control. <coughs> a coyote is cornered in someone's backyard and could be rabbit. Who do we call? Animal control. Uh, in, in every sense of the word, these positions are very, very important. If the police need to go into a backyard or execute a search warrant and there could be a dog there that poses an uh, imminent threat to the officers, someone with the fortitude has to go in with a noose, corral that animal, and take that animal out so that the police can perform their duties. Likewise with the fire department, you can respond to a call, someone is sick, someone needs immediate medical <coughs> attention, and there is an animal in there that's very protective, you have to call animal control to take care of that. So it's, I don't want people to think that we're turning a blind eye towards residency, but I do want the public to know that this is part of public safety in a large city like ours with all sorts of animal issues that we have to address on a daily basis. So uh, if, if I'm not mistaken, and I don't expect the mayor to remember, I think this position was even advertised in the Mass Municipal Association book. Uh, but I, but I, know it was, I know it was heavily advertised, and we don't have someone in the city who was qualified and ready to take the job. And as much as I support residency, I'm not going to turn a blind eye towards public safety issues. So I am going to support this waiver for all of the reasons that I've just articulated. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Rodriguez. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Ms. Drake, uh, as the mayor said, uh, I'm the one who started this whole process while I was in the mayor's office, and um, I too am a supporter of uh, residency because I, I believe in, in this city and I believe that people should want to live in this city. But we also have to, as Council Fowell was saying, we got to be cognizant of the issues that we have uh, facing our city. And once in a while we have these situations where we require somebody to have 
some specialized training in order to be able to do the job of the safety of our residents. And, but that's not the only reason why you're seeking um, a waiver. You've got some issues that also prevent you from uh, moving into the city that you and I had discussed. Uh, you don't have to go into details of, of that, but it's not because you choose, you're choosing not to live in Brockton. It's because you've got some issues that also prevent you from moving into Brockton. Correct. You know, and I think that's important because it's not just by choice no. that you're choosing not to move into the community, but you've got some personal issues that prevent you from doing so. And uh, I too will support this, uh, this waiver for those reasons and for the reasons that we uh, has been expressed in here in terms of uh, uh, the need to keep our citizens safe. So I, I uh, welcome you to continue to work and do whatever you can to help the city out. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Council Lally. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah, I I have to say you do fantastic work. You know, I've seen it firsthand. Thank you. Um, but I also want to say just on residency, you know, it is difficult with jobs that require such, you know, specific background and, and, and you know, that have these strict requirements for us to uh, narrow the pool as, as, <coughs> as much as we sometimes do. Um, you know, we want to encourage the best to come to Brockton. We do want people to move to Brockton, but and we want to and we want to grow the people within, you know within the city already. But sometimes we aren't able to to meet that for specific instances <coughs> of specific positions. And you know, as as Mayor Sullivan says, the city's a business. You know, we got to run the city like a business, and and the businesses are are very competitive, and they can be competitive when it comes to hiring as well. So residency keeps people who are invested in the city, who know about the city, who care about the city, that is true, but it also impedes our ability to, uh, you know, to, uh, to hire as effectively because we, we're, we're, kind of, we're kind of tying what we can do. So there are, there are pros to residency, absolutely, but there are cons to that, and, and we're witnessing some of these today, and so I, I did just want to highlight that. Um, but I think, I think that uh, you do a good job, and I'm happy to have you back. Thank you. I am as well. Councilor Cardozo. Yes. Hi, dear. Hi. So uh, how long did you work in a position before you left the first time? Uh, I was hired first as an independent contractor through mm -hmm. the city from Lou because you did not have an animal inspector, and there was three years' worth of work that was not done sitting on a desk no barn inspections and the state was calling saying you need someone to put in that seat. Um, so I came in as an independent contractor. They made the position a city part-time position mm -hmm. until the ordinances were instated in October 17th, um, October 2017 in the new um, keeping of fowl and domestic farm animals. And that's when I was hired full-time. Okay, so you did what? I did almost a year in the city before I was hired full-time. So, but I've been here since November 17th of 2017. Okay, have you had a chance to get to know the city and its residents a bit? <coughs> yes, I actually like have a lot. My um, grandmother came over here from Lithuania on the boat, mm -hmm. and my grandmother was in the village, and my mother grew up in the village and was raised in Brockton. The Packards are actually my cousins from the Packard farm. Okay. So I grew up in the city with my cousins, my aunts, and my uncles. So I came to Brockton a lot. And being here in the city, I've closed over 150 cases from the 10 months that I've been out, plus the cases that have come onto my desk. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've done about 60 bond inspections, and I get more licenses coming in every day. And as I drive around and I see chicken coops, we're posting on doors so that they have to come in and file for a license. Okay. Would you be open to mentoring a young person Always. maybe someday to teach them what you do? I would love to, yeah. Teach them your trade? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Good uh, council, you're right on point. So we've already had conversations, uh, and, and if she is forthcoming with the waiver and the store continues employment, we're going to bring a 4-H program back to the city of Brockton. Mm -hmm. Long overdue, where North Middle School is mm -hmm. right now. Thank you. Where North Middle School is uh, in the back is going to be a community garden uh, sponsored by 4-H as well. Mm -hmm. It is a win-win for the community. Great question. Thank Good. you. Good. Yeah. All right. Definitely. Thank you. Yeah, and I'll be, um, I spoke to, I walked into the wrong room <laughs> last week, and I um, thank God put you in places for a reason, and they were meeting on green spaces for the city. So uh, we're hopefully, we'll have a table for the Board of Health to educate the public, the nurse, me, anyone else there who can teach anybody in the city 
about the Board of Health and what we do. Because that's um, important. If you, you know, so moving forward, you yes. know, we're all getting older. We have to mm -hmm. pass on the trade to younger folks so then we don't have this problem forever with residency issues. Right. Mm -hmm. Great. You all set? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Councillor Ian Erie. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> Mary, I've never had the uh, opportunity to, um, you know, really work with you or to make contact with you. I've only <coughs> heard the positives about uh, everything that you've done and, and uh, heard um, everything um, prior to that when uh, uh, Mr. Tataly was alive and, and mentioned that, you know, the person that was in that job was doing a great, um, a great performance for us. And unfortunately, because of your situation, you know, you were, um, you, you departed and, and um, uh, you know, we were able to get you back and I think that's positive. I think, um, and believe me, I'm not a great believer in residency. I didn't vote for it in 1991, some 30 years ago. And that, as far as I'm concerned, that whole, that whole uh, uh, question was on the ballot. It's an altogether different question than what's in the ordinance books today, to be truthful with you. So um, I just think if people want to, you know, work in the city of Brockton and you're, and you're uh, confident to do so, that you should be able to, and I shouldn't tell you where you should live anyways. That's my personal opinion. No matter what we say here tonight um, with any of these, uh, there's going to be a negative put against us. Uh, um, I know that because I got the article that when I was council president two years ago when I was hung up in a situation with the, um, uh, another gentleman from the planner's office. But um, I did everything that uh, the other councils have said, and uh, I welcome you and uh, hope we can do some of those other positive things that, that like the mayor's just mentioned, too. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, if I could, when I met with uh, Ms. Drake. Can you are, uh, for the record? Sorry. Depends State on the day. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm Maria Sullivan's husband. <laughs> um, Lucky to be. Yeah, oh, always will be. Right. Um, so when I met with Ms. Drake in my office, I went over everything from A to Z, right? And one thing I said is I always share information with the council and with school committee. And one thing that I asked her was about the town of Hanson. Um, she's an on-call for the town of Hanson. It does not impede her job here, her full-time dedicated job to the city of Brockton. But I wanted to ask her about that. She was very frank about it. Um, you know, she does it after hours if need be. She's on call. But I wanted to be, and, you know, in light of what I've always said, I want to make sure everybody, I think the Enterprise probably ran with it. I don't know. I don't read that paper. But I think at the end of the day, <laughs> you know, I just wanted to share that information with you if you didn't, if you didn't know that. Thank you. We can make a motion for favorable recommendation. Second. Second. Motion made and seconded for a favorable recommendation back to the full city council. All those in favor? All those opposed? Recommended favorably. Thank you. Clerk, item number 10. Ordered. The city council reviews an exemption from the residency <coughs> requirement in accordance with the revised ordinances of the city of Brockton, Article 3, Section 2-110, City of Brockton Ordinance Waiver of Residency in reference to the Finance Department. Invited Honorable Mayor Sullivan or his designee, Troy Clarkson, Chief Financial Officer, Tiffany Casulio, Financial Analyst. <laughs> Casulo. Good, Good evening, Madam Chairman, uh, members of the board. This is the third uh, differential uh, waiver request. Um, for those that have been on the council for a long time, uh, Tiffany was employed here starting in 2001, City of Brockton, the city clerk's office. Um, she, she met the standard uh, by far. She stayed within the city for over seven years. And then after she met that criteria, she moved to the town of Bridgewater. Um, but she served here honorably for many, many, many years. Um, she's been promoted now, and now she's in Mr. Clarkson's office. She's no longer in the city clerks, but she's in the finance department, the CFO's office. Because of her promotion, uh, there's a question on should she have to move back to the city of Brockton to meet the standard of residency. I myself personally don't think that that's appropriate, but that's up to the council to decide. But that's what's before you this evening. And she is here to answer any questions. Thank you, Mayor. Any questions, Councillors? Councilor Powell? No, just a comment. Uh, this is the third unique request for a waiver. Uh, one of the most important things any organization does is identify people who are competent and qualified and can be promoted into another position. In HR, you'd call it, I guess, succession planning. But it, it's so important to have people like that. And it would be absolutely ridiculous to say to Ms. Sisulo, we're going to reset the clock. You've already met your requirements to live in the city. You have far exceeded those, but wait a minute, we're going to promote you, and now we're going to invoke residency. 
I, I just don't think that's logical. I don't think the public that voted for residency would think that that would be logical if we did that. So I am very much in favor of this, and I wish the young lady well in, in her new assignment. Thank you. Motion to recommend favor. Second. Second. Had a question. Thank you. Just on just on the motion, and uh, I did some of the same things that uh, my colleague just mentioned, and uh, I know that um, before she uh, departed to go off to Bridgewater, she was uh, uh, an elite resident of Ward Three for a while before she um, departed. And uh, that being said, um, and with her her job as a um, as she was working for the clerk's office for a good many years, and the job that she's even been doing uh, since she joined the finance department uh, under Mr. Condon, now under Mr. Clarkson, um, that I can't uh, think of any other person uh, at this point that could do the position she's doing, and she's always there to help. She's always uh, one to give you an answer. Um, I, I sponsored this uh, to come before us this evening because uh, I, I believe that, you know, talent like this, we need to keep, and, and we don't want to lose it, and I think that's what's most important, and I, I hope the residents understand that, but I'm, I'm not worried if they do or they don't, because all I know is I got, we got a, a great person that's um, sitting there and, and knows what she's doing with the rest of the team, so that's most important to me, so I appreciate it. Thank you. Good luck to Tiffany. A motion has been made and properly seconded. All those in favor? All those opposed? The order goes back favorably to the uh, back Thank to the full you, city council. council. Thank you. Madam Clerk, number 10. Order, regulations governing the operation of hawkers and peddlers within the city of Brockton. Madam Chair. Uh, council Paolo. What a way to end the night talking about <laughs> hawkers and peddlers. I mean, does it get any better than this? <laughs> In January, we received regulations that would govern hawkers and peddlers loosely defined people who go from place to place in the city carrying items for sale. And we received this document. It has approximately, uh, I don't know, seven sections. Eight sections. So eight sections uh, of, of regulations. The reason I took an interest in this is because sometimes in some communities, and I'm not saying in Brockton, hawkers and peddlers deal in stolen property. They break into a car, they break into a house, they take the property, and then they go out and they immediately sell it because they want the money. So the regulations that we have and the licensing process we had for hawkers and peddlers was something that piqued my curiosity, if you will. Well, there is a state license that can be issued, and if it is issued, thanks to research by Shannon Resnick, if you're issued a state peddler's license, we may not charge for a license here in Brockton. We only have one licensee. We charge that person $360 for a hawker's and peddler's license. And under these regulations, if they came in and applied on January 1st and paid the $360, they'd have to come back in April and pay another $360 because instead of running on a calendar year or a year-to-year -year basis based on the date of issue, we make the license expire on the 1st of May. I don't know why that is. Someone said we've always done it that way. I'm not so sure that that's a business friendly or a reasonable thing to do. So I would like to offer an amendment to these regulations, all of these that are on the enclosure that we originally are fine, but here is the amendment that I would like to offer that would be inserted prior to section one of this document. A license issued by the city of Brockton is only valid within Brockton. The holder of a state hawkers and peddlers license may not be charged for a city license. The city license shall expire one year from the date of issuance. And lastly, a copy of the regulations shall be issued to an applicant and another copy signed and returned by the ap applicant to confirm receipt of the information. And I've, I've just done that to clarify this process and the last copy of the regulations being signed and returned when we give out licenses, we should get into that practice. Because how many times have we heard, well, I didn't know that. Well, no one told me that. Well, gee, that's not printed on the license. And I think it's time that we at least educate people when they receive a license from us as to what's required of them, have them initial it, that they've received that document, and then there's no question down the road if enforcement or a violation becomes apparent that we haven't at least given them the basic information they need. So if I could, I'd like to give this 
to the clerk and I would offer it as an amendment. Council Cruz, did you have a question? Well, no, um, no. well, there's no well, second yet, so, so I'll second it. That's a form of a motion, Councilor. The, we're voting on yes, the, amendment. the amendment. Motion's been made to accept the amendment and it's been properly seconded. All those in favor of the amendment? All those opposed? Okay, the amendment's accepted. Madam no. Chairman, just before we get to final uh, adoption, Cruz. just to let the public know uh, so they're not a little concerned about stolen articles. This is actually a very old and ancient order. We have one person in the city who has this license and it does not concern wire or, or copper tubing that people steal from base basements. Hawkers and peddlers carry for sale meats, mm -hmm. butter, cheese, fish, fresh fruits <laughs> or vegetables. They, this is an ancient thing where years ago when your grandfather was there, the hawker and peddler went around the city and yelled out it literally was a hawker, yelled out, do you want to buy fish or butter? Or, we have one person, I don't want people to be nervous at home. Secondhand licenses are, are a major concern with stolen items, and we, I think we've tightened some of that up. But uh, <coughs> we've, we've put a lot into this. I appreciate what Attorney Resnick and Council Fowell have done, but I just want the public to understand this is really something that we could almost get rid of totally, a hawker's and peddler's license, because that's what it's, that those are the only people is one person, I believe he's about 90, that still has a license. The fish and, market. <laughs> and uh, it's, it, it, it's, it's not as big a deal as, as we've made it, but it's, I'm glad that we're getting it in line with state, with state law. So in Thank that you, case, Council I'll make a rec uh, recommendation, recommend favorably. Motion's been made and properly seconded. All those in favor? All those opposed? The motion carries favorably back to the full city council. Uh, councilors, before we take uh, councilors' recognition, I have a few announcements. Um, today, the Mayor Bill Carpenter Garage opened this morning as scheduled. So it was, uh, I believe, it was uh, three floors were filled. Uh, it was a, it was a good. Um, it's beautiful, nice, clean, open, and ready for business. So, um, the Mayor and uh, Councilor Thompson and Councilor uh, Mendez and I were there. And um, so thank you for the opportunity, Mayor, to, to be there for the opening today. Um, Mayor Sullivan, I was going to announce your meeting, but if you'd like to do that since you're there. Uh, thank, thank you, Council President. I do want to thank you, and I want to thank uh, Rita and Jeff for being there. And I want to thank uh, Robert Jenkins from BRA and also Bob Malley from the Parking Authority. It's a game changer um, in that neck of the woods, absolutely. Uh, it's, it's, it's just a well-constructed building. So. Um, I do, uh, I do want to thank everybody involved. I want to just give two quick updates, if I could, counselors. Um, we are going to be having uh, a Stop the Violence Community Forum uh, this coming Wednesday night, which is March 4th at 6 to 8 at Brockton High School, the main auditorium. Um, we've been advertising, and it's on Route 24 and the two digital billboards on Route 24 as well. Uh, we, uh, we've had an initial uh, roundtable conversation with the DA's office, Stades, Brockton PD, uh, civic groups, community activists. Um, this is an open invitation for anybody and everybody. We're very concerned about the uptick and the, uh, the gunshots uh, in the winter months. So we've we got to really get a hold of it. Uh, we're going to have best practices that night. So again, it's 6 to 8 this coming Wednesday night. Um, and the other thing I just wanted to share with you, counselors, is I, uh, I've had uh, several um, meetings, uh, conference calls. Today I had a round table up in the GAR room about the coronavirus. Uh, you know, there's a lot of panic right now. Uh, some is, is founded, some is unfounded. Uh, but those in attendance today were um, Brockton Public Schools, Brockton Emergency Management, Board of Health, Brockton Housing Authority, the VA Medical Center, uh, Brockton Area Transit, Cardinal Spelman High School, Council on Aging, Father Bill's Mainspring, and the Chief of ER at Signature Hospital, uh, the old Brockton Hospital. I also um, had a conversation with Maricela Marrero, who's the President of Good Samaritan. Um, we are going to be doing uh, reverse 911 calls to the general public. Uh, we're going to uh, maximize our efforts in terms of making sure we educate people, make sure that, you know, they take the, the, the procedures that um, everyone has been saying, you know, wash your hands, um, you know, isolate yourself if you feel that you might be not, you know, doing well. Um, I will say this, though. There were a lot of rumors and innuendos about a confirmed case of coronavirus in the city of Brockton. It's unfounded. It's false. That has never happened here in the city of Brockton. But with that being said, uh, we're seeing now in the states, you know, people are losing their lives. It's a serious, serious issue. So from a community standpoint, the people that were at the table today were experts. 
Um, and we, we really walked away there with a game plan. Steve Hook from, from Beamer is going to be assisting on the 911. Uh, but it's really about, you know, working together in a collaborative approach to educate people, make sure that the uh, most vulnerable, such as the seniors, Council on Aging was there with Janice Fitzgerald as well and Doughty. Um, but I just wanted to share that with you uh, to make sure that you're all aware that we are actively pursuing this. I'm going to work with you and the school committee as well uh, just to educate. Mike Thomas is 100% on board as well. So I just wanted to share that tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. Council Cruz, did you have uh, a question? Thank you. I just uh, two items. Um, <coughs> number one, count members of the Ordinance Committee, Thursday evening, March 5th, here at 6 o'clock, we have a meeting of the Ordinance Committee. And even though the mayor is here, he's no longer Councilor Sullivan. I want to take his usual thing and bark at everybody. Tomorrow is election day. And it's <laughs> possibly the most important election <laughs> in your lifetime is the election this year. So the, in November will be more important. Please get out, everyone, and vote tomorrow. Make sure you get out. It's so important. Um, everything that has been happening in the last four years we need to fix. So please get out and vote tomorrow. And uh, again, Councilor Sullivan always was the uh, backer on that. So I'm going to take that take that from you. So get out and vote tomorrow, please. <laughs> Thank you. That was my Thank you. but I'm glad you made it, Councilor, Councilor Lally. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I just want to remind everyone that this Saturday, March 7th, is Lithuanian Independence Day or the celebration of Lithuanian Independence Day. Uh, that'll be held at St. Michael's Church, 87 North Main Street in Avon. Uh, around 5.15, there is a mass before. Uh, you can order tickets by calling John Drzinskis at 508-586-8599. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's an event that I've gone to every year as a counselor. I think it's fantastic. Uh, and I would recommend people to go. You know, you get food, all kinds of, all kinds of, you know, celebrations of the culture. It's, it's a good time. It is a great event. I grew up in the Lithuanian village, so I always consider myself part Lithuanian. <laughs> Councilor Fowler? I, I had a question for the mayor, and it's too oh. late, so thank you. Okay. Um, any other councilors? With no further business, this meeting's adjourned.